This Monday, we're focusing on relationships and interpersonal dealings during this very difficult time of COVID-19. We also feel like we're in the midst of a revolution. So why not call on Ustan Jovo to come back in the loft as a clinical psychologist and help enlighten us in this current moment? Welcome back to the loft, Ustan. Thank you for having me back. Hi. Star, now the existence of racial tensions around the world is something that's quite difficult to ignore and has been around for decades. So why is it so difficult to overcome racial discrimination? So what makes it really difficult to overcome racial discrimination is the fact that it doesn't only occur among individuals, but also it exists in institutions and systems, and it is deeply rooted in historic and social context. So if it is um, for us to address racial discrimination, it's important for us to address specific issues that shape institutional structures um, so that we can be able to overcome racial discrimination because it occurs um, in structures and systems on a daily basis continuously and it is more of a systemic thing than it is an interpersonal thing. Mm. Yeah, we definitely do see that um, in terms of history repeating itself. Now, through the Black Lives Matter movement that we've seen happen internationally, we've also seen beautiful international solidarity with the African-American people. What does that say about us as an international community? So it's so beautiful to watch, Felisa. Um, the social cohesion, the solidarity with the international black community. It just goes to show how much people identify with what is happening on a global scale. Also, it may be triggering some experiences that they may have had in smaller scales um, in their communities, in their schools, in corporate organizations. They may have also experienced injustice racial discrimination and with this solidarity that we are seeing with the international black community it really just shows how much the international community is no longer willing to tolerate injustice and racial discrimination so it's such a beautiful thing to see people um, actually coming together and saying that this is not okay and it should not be happening and although people have been experiencing it in their small corners and their small um, local places, sometimes they may not be able to speak up about it. So when it happens on a larger scale, it's much easier to sort of also put in your um, opinions about it because you've also experienced it. So it's really beautiful to see people coming together like this. We're in the midst of June, which is celebrated as Pride Month. We live in quite a liberal world. So why do you think some people still find it difficult to accept the existence of different sexualities? So humans categorize things naturally so. And um, to account for this is um, the in-group, out-group biases, where a person psychologically identifies with being a member of a particular group. And people who are not part of that group are seen as less similar, um, not having the same um, values, interests, worldviews. And as a result, we may have um, biases against people who we think are different from us. This includes negative categorizations, negative feelings about those people, and negative ideas about people who are not part of our group, as we would put it. And it really makes it difficult for people to tolerate differences in that way. Mm. Stel, you talk a lot of identifying with a group and finding a voice. And I guess this also has to do with knowing yourself. So how important is it for one to truly know their truest self and what are the benefits thereof? So speaking about truest self is really speaking about being authentic, being original, being vulnerable, really embracing all aspects of yourself. So that's the great aspects of who you are and also the parts of you that may need improvement, in some cases may even need healing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important that um, at, at all times we always aspire to be better and we have ambitions. But while we have these aspirations, it's important to always be aware of where we are right now in our mm -hmm. reality currently. And that um, just helps us um, identify with our truest self and we are able to better achieve some of the aspirations that we may have if we are able to embrace where we are currently. So then quite practically, how does one begin to form a solid relationship with themselves in order to deal with conflict? So a relationship with yourself is really the most important. It's really crucial to proper development. So how do we form a good relationship with ourselves? So really it starts way back um, where we learned um, from our primary caregivers how to relate to ourselves, how, relate, how to relate to people around us, and the world at large. So we learn from 
those interactions with our primary caregivers, how are we supposed to carry ourselves in the world? So if we are to have a good relationship with ourselves, we need to be intentional about our relationship with ourselves. We need to move forward um, to better knowing ourselves. Awareness is so, so important. We may not always know all our blind spots and all our shortcomings, but it's important for us to become more aware of ourselves. And in being more aware of ourselves, it helps us to be able to know our triggers, to know things um, that may set us off. Therefore, in situations of conflict, we are more aware of where does this come from? Why is this um, sort of making me so irritable? Why is this make, making me so angered in this way? So if you know yourself a lot, you'll be able to work through difficulties and work through situations of conflict. Mm. And Ta, finally, you know, on today's show, we're celebrating all things relationships, all things love, and it doesn't matter what shape, color, form your love comes in. It could be same sex, it could be interracial. So taking this step further into the general global conversation that's happening, when it comes to discrimination and oppression, how then does one relate to their partner, especially if the partner feels senses of guilt, if they're the opposite race, or if they feel terms of um, oppression, if it's same-sex couples? So the important thing there is that um, it doesn't matter what type of relationship you're in or who you're in a relationship with, but the phenomena of relationships is the same throughout all relationships. Mm -hmm. So it really does go back to taking people's perspective into consideration. So if the person you're in a relationship with, it's always important for you to be able to keep them in mind and have their mind in your mind. Mm -hmm. Think about how they would be affected by certain things that you say. Think about how they would be affected by certain things that you do. So it really is important to always have the other pers person's perspective considered in relationships. Doesn't matter what kind of relationship, but it really does counteract a lot of um, relational difficulties if we are able to consider other people's perspectives. Thank you so much, Ta, for um, that incredible information. And this dialogue is so powerful. I'm sure that it's going to trickle onto our social media in quite a profound way. We thank you so much um, for sharing your incredible wealth with us. Thank you so much, Dali. Clinical psychologist Tan Jovo again dropping knowledge. We definitely feel enlightened by this information, and we certainly hope you feel the same.